anybody that knew Jack, Jack was the most generous person. And after we lost him, the stories that came out from friends of his, that things he'd done that we didn't even know that he'd done. He was massively patient with people and he wanted to help people. If you could, could you tell us a bit about the foundation and why you set it up? Yeah, of course. So unfortunately we lost um, my son Jack, who died of um, juvenile diabetes. Jack was a massive darts fan, played darts all over the place. He watched darts all over the place. Fittingly, we wanted to do something in Jack's memory. There was a huge clamour of people asking us what we could do. So we immediately set up a foundation called jackdowdingfoundation.com. And that's purely to raise, to tell Jack's story, but also to raise money for juvenile diabetes. What were the first symptoms that you noticed from Jack? Um, well, Jack um, suddenly started getting up and going to the loo multiple times in the night. My wife um, has been a nurse most of her working life, so she sort of recognised the signs quite early in Jack and said, um, you know, we need to go and get him checked out. And it was, it was a very clean you know, and straightforward prognosis that you know, Jack was type 1 diabetic. I'd heard of it, but I, I probably, like most people, are fairly ignorant of exactly what it was because it, it's like anything, if it's not affecting you directly, you, you don't pay as much attention to it. You know, as a parent and also for a child, you suddenly get all sorts of stuff thrown at you, equipment, insulin, needles, and it's it's quite scary, you know, not only for the person that's got it, but also for the person who's looking after them as well. There's one thing dealing with the medical condition, but it's also the psychological condition that goes alongside it, you know, how do I cope with it? And there's all the questions of why me? You know, why have I got it? Why have my friends not got it? You know, and that's something that you try and explain as best as you can as a parent to, to the youngster. If you knew Jack as an individual, you always played it down. You know, he didn't make a big fuss about it. Some of the kids didn't even know that he was diabetic. Just go off quietly and quickly check his levels and come back and not tell him. But obviously, you know, you tend to carry around a little bag because obviously you need all your insulin, your bits and pieces in the bag. So some people, oh, what's in your bag, Jack? You know, and then probably just, oh, just my phone and my wallet, you know. Yeah, he was just that sort of kid. He, he was there to enjoy life. He didn't want to make a fuss that, you know, he had something that, that stopped, held him back. Darts is a massive part of your foundation. Of How did that start? I started watching darts when, this will probably show my age now for people, the first world championship in 1978. And I think like most fathers and, and sons, you know, if your dad's involved with it, you get involved with it. My dad took me to the football at five and therefore, you know, I ended up supporting football for the rest of my life, you know, because once it's in your blood, you can't get it out. Um, but yeah, Jack just loved it as well. And it was a nice thing to do together. Go off to, you know, the darts in Ireland or one of the big events, but it was lovely because it meant we spent quality time together and, you know, you can never get that back. You know, I see a lot with the junior academy that I run that the fathers are there and the dads probably have played or maybe still play a little bit, you know, but they're there now for the, you know, the next person to have their journey at darts. Our ethos of our academy is only two important things. When they come in, I say to them, right, there's two very important things. They're looking really seriously and the kids look a bit like, I said, you've got to come here, you've got to make friends and have fun. And the, the nice thing about the sport is that you don't have to be the tallest, the fittest, most athletic child in your, in your school. It's, it's just lovely to see them just enjoying themselves, really. Did you play darts a lot together then? Was that in Southampton Yeah, as well? we did. We, we played down in the Southampton Dart Series together. We played a little bit locally for the social club. But I guess the reality is Jack was just starting on his darting journey and, you know, mine was coming towards its end. And if you don't mind talking about it, how sudden was his passing? How quickly so, can yeah, this So, yeah, so it was very quick. So, um, so basically what happened on the day, so I was had some work I had to do in the garden. Eight o'clock in the morning I saw Jack and we were chatting about things. He said he was feeling a little bit under the weather and he didn't know if he was going to go to work he worked part-time in Marks and Spencer's and I said like typical dad so Jack do your bloods tell me where you are and he said no no dad I've done them they're all okay yeah they're all fine yeah reassured me reassured me reassured me I went out into the garden did some work came in about an hour and a quarter later went upstairs um, to take a drink up and he'd already gone so he'd obviously had a huge high and what that did was that would have stopped his heart and that would have put him into, you know, into a coma straight away. So my wife, who had been a nurse all of her life, I called out to her, she rushed up, she tried CPR on Jack and she did CPR until the ambulance arrived. But the reality was he'd already gone. Um, and Angie, my wife, knew that. And obviously she was trying to be as delicate about it as she, was, you know, as she could, but she realized it was just very sudden. And, and uh, if he'd suddenly gone like that and collapsed and he was in his bedroom, if you've been downstairs, with, you know, all those things like race, but as a parent, you know, you always think, oh, if I hadn't gone out and done this, I hadn't done that, could have I done it differently? And that's all the things you'll always wrestle with in your life. But it just shows you how dangerous uh, an illness it really is. I always thought of diabetes like a seesaw. It's as dangerous high as it was low. And unfortunately, when we lost Jack, it wasn't a low, it was a high that actually, you know, caused his passing. And it, and it can come on quite suddenly. But like I say, if you've got a friend that is diabetic, you know, just keep an eye on them. Obviously following that, I can't imagine the hardships you've been through. Yeah. 
with Jack's passing. What kind of brought you to create the foundation as quickly as you did? When you lose somebody, the worst thing you don't want to happen is to lose the memory of that person. So you feel if you do something, it, it keeps the memory alive as much as you can. I wanted to make sure that there was a legacy to what had gone on, but also use the website as a way for people to understand what the condition is. You hear people, oh, something pricked me, you know, I thought, well, you imagine doing that with a needle five times a day, every day, squeezing your finger to get blood out just to check what your levels are, you know, it's, and, and also I think, you know, people do find that difficult, you know, they feel, oh, should I must go to the toilet and do it and, and hide, I can't show it in front of other people, so, you know, the research is massive and, it, and it's wonderful to see they're actually making some strides now with links to apps and things to alert you if you're going low and, and you know, if, had some of those things been around when Jack was here, then there would have been an alarm on Jack's phone and an alarm on my phone and suddenly went big spike. And, you know, me or Angie would have rushed in and, you know, done, done whatever we could to hopefully prevent it. You know, maybe we, it could have been saved potentially. And what made you choose juvenile diabetes? He actually did some things, some runs and some bits and pieces for JDRF. Um, still got the medals from when he did the fun runs and things. So it was, a, it was something that was close to us personally as a family. The research really ultimately will go to finding a, a, either a cure for your pancreas not being able to make insulin or to research funds maybe to have an operation to actually have something operated on to actually give you something that will create insulin. So you know personally from your own story that you know what you want one day is them to say look if you pop in for a bit of keyhole surgery today that be it you won't have to worry about it anymore. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> How important is it for companies like Modus and I guess charities to kind of get involved and raise money? Oh it's massive it's the absolute lifeblood without people like yourselves and other people raising money these charities wouldn't get the money that they need to do the research and you know the worst thing in the world was if research had to stop because it didn't have enough money to do it so you know once again thank you to all the guys at Modus thanks for Jason for putting it on your website as well I really massively appreciate that. Um, and all of the guys and all the influencers that are going to play on the day and all the dart players, you know, and I've given um, Jake some stickers that he said kindly some of the guys are going to wear on their shirts to raise awareness again. So like a massive thank you for everybody involved from me.